Okay, now we need to get back to the normal time as possible. Yeah, that was only a snippet of a sneak peek of what we have to do in the child tent and the child side of the, of the temple. Not very long overall, but I'm pretty sure that was because this temple split in two, and that's what it is. I need my big Goron sword, please! Because now, <laughs> that means I can make Iron Knuckles my- I'm the boss of the Iron Knuckles after that fiasco. Let's go! Yeah, that's a nice Master Sword. Now put it, now, put it back in. Alright, here we go. Time to go back to- now we actually now have them fully equipped. You can see right there on Link's model that we now have the Silver Gauntlets in hand. Uh, I wish they would did more of this though. The Silver Gauntlets, while indeed cool, it's only meant to push heavy objects. That's it. It says that you can lift heavy things. Uh, well, technically... Uh, let me see if I can get this. I think by technicality, you can lift, um, boulders. This, yeah, you can You can now lift silver boulders now. I didn't realize there's a hole here. <laughs> What's in here, actually, first? Oh, don't tell me. Oh, this is annoying. <laughs> hey, come here, you. What do you give me? Come on, what are you going to give me, buddy? Green potion for 40 rupees. Yeah, I'm not think I might need that. Why not? Give me a green potion. That fell with the potion I lost. And now you... What are you gonna give me? All I know this is grass underneath here, which means you can win red potion for 40 rupees. Sure, I need that right now. So you get potions down here. You know, I have never noticed that. <laughs> it's all first times here for the revisit of more creative time. <laughs> I'm gonna just drink that right now. There we go. Sweet. Well, I didn't realize there was actually no actually fairies down here. Or uh shops down here. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> well, there's so that's something new. But yeah, the silver gauntlets uh, now allows you to actually lift you know, gray boulders. So like there's a few gray boulders around the Hyrule you can find now. And now you can find like secrets now and everything else with it too. Now we're ourselves back here. I'm gonna get myself these off these uh, off these hover boots because I don't need them for this temple for the most part. So we'll just do like that, like so. So now we have to do this the hard way, the right side. Now we have to push this up here and get ourselves going. Yeah, beforehand we could not push this block, and you might think it. Yeah, there's actually a silver. There's actually is a silver block like this in the Gerudo training ground that allows you to get an extra key. But you really don't have to get it by far what I've been showing you that you can just av avoid that entire thing altogether. There's a Beemos. Get you out of the way. And why did you not explode? Die already. There we go. We come up here. We can hit this bad boy right here. Oh, I missed. I missed. There we go. You know, I didn't even really notice there was actually a Gerudo symbol on the switches. Of the uh, the ones that can be triggered like that. That's cool. I didn't even realize that. Oh, you gotta fight me! Oh, now it's a wolf host. What a kick in the pants! <laughs> I could have you. I could have fought you in the child timeline. Come on now. Yeah, there you go. Get you taken down. Can we come here. We have to play Zelda's lullaby. Yeah, it's kind of like the small. The spirit temple on the child side is very simplified to the point where it's like it's almost basically. Not really experimental much, just a lot of fire enemies. I guess you could be it's a fire and fire temple 2.0 or the or fire temple for the young link, but that's about it, really. I guess there's a compass on this side now, so now we can see our map. What we do, let's see, if we come down here. There's a, I think that's sink sand after you stay in there for far too long and it sinks you down to the depths. But we don't want that. We want to stay alive. <laughs> so we come over here yonder. You have to do the same thing we did technically in the last dungeon is to in the last half was to basically do get this and Ow! Oh fine, you wanna be that way? Good, I can be that way too. I can hover. Then I've got my hover boots on, I can grab that jewel with no problem whatsoever. <laughs> this place being a jerk they are. I can walk forward like this, watch this. And these are probably a provincial moving boulders. I'm pretty sure these boulders are full of magic. Let's be frank here. Yeah, they're full of magic. 
<laughs> oh, nope. I didn't, I keep, you know, I keep hitting that and basically thinking I'm gonna go right and using the R button. Cause I'm just assumed to use it, but no, the ZR button on the, on the controller is basically, you're gonna be sent to the, uh, <laughs> to this SO screen. I almost did that once in one session. Was almost overriding and almost lose all my progress. I was like, ooh, that would've been scary. Oh, why can I not remember the Song of Time? Oh, that's right. That's what it is. I keep forgetting the stupid Song of Time. It's A. <laughs> it's a. It's almost literally almost the same song for Zelda's Lullaby, but it's just switching two notes for the other. But you have to remove this block if you want to get a gold sculpture. If you so choose to get it. Thank you. And I believe you have to move this back. There we go. Move that back and then we can get ourselves the other uh, coin or the other silver rupee here. We don't need that anymore. Yeah, I really wish there was a lot more uses of this and just say, you know, move a block. I'm like... Would have been a cool if we could use like you know the the light power from the the the, the sun song for everything though it means you could actually you know freeze time with using this the, the song of time. See that would have been really a nice a, a nice way of using of the temple of times you know gimmick. Oh watch out! Yep, there's a trap here. Like like will appear from the screen if you go up to the scene beforehand. And again before I like likes will eat your extra tunic and shield equipped. So yeah, and if you basically die. Or basically lose, or leave the room without it. That means they're permanently lost and you have to go back to the shop to buy another one. <laughs> Slight annoyance that is. Ow! Oh. Of course I get hit by them. Cursed rocks. I'm walking here. <laughs> Link's walking. <laughs> He's strutting everywhere, that's for sure. Let's open this door and we get ourselves into the next area. Well, watch out for another like-like, yeah. They really want to put the whole like-likes into perspective here. It's almost like the like like is a desert dwelling creature. I, you know, I could see that. I could see that technically. You know, it, it mimics the sand. You know, it mimics sand. So it looks like it'd be like a quicksand creature of some kind. You know. Also, with the hook shot here, we can now basically bypass most of the climbing in this game or this stage initially. So, uh, will I see anything over here? No. Oh yeah, now we have. Oh yeah, you want to talk about jerk placement? Yeah, there is a, uh... There's a wall master, and he's hidden by the illusion magic. So we want to kill this thing. And then hit this and go in the, and go into town. Like, they rarely ever do this after this, though. Like, they didn't, the, the dark, the shadow temple did this. But also, um... The spirit temple's doing it, too, where you can only... They're hiding enemies underneath the guise of the Lens of Truth. Which, again, it's nice that they're making items more useful than anything they never right to be. Which is great, because there's the one thing about Zelda games in the, after this, potentially, is that you have one-time use items that fill up your inventory and you don't use them anymore. So, this uh, little puzzle here, every time you light up a sun that's not right, it'll burn away and give you a chest. Now, the chest could potentially give you uh, rupees, or some sort of minor reward. But more or not though, it's gonna be like a trap, like an ice trap or something that freezes you in place. You could open them up, but I ain't not going to. <laughs> I don't need I don't need that damage on me. So now we're wrecking here. We'll find out this guy is alive. <laughs> and that guy goes away like crazy. Alright, so now we have to deal with this room proper. Is now we have the ability to do so, we can now use the hook shot to get across, or we could use the uh, hover boots to get ourselves across as well. There we go. And now we need to use the hammer. Finally, oh yeah, the hammer? Oh yeah, you have the hammer, right? Yep, hammer's on us. Yeah, you that that rusted switch to open up the door. And then it's able to well actually this switch opens up another oh that switch opens up the door down there. It opens up the- it's technically a shortcut. Really, it's really is just a shortcut. We'll go through that right now. So there's a lullaby. We'll get ourselves a chest on the hands of the goddess. Okay, I don't- okay, there is a controversy about this statue, and it's nothing really that kind of bad, really. Um, 
for some baffling reason, uh, the, uh, the lady, the statue's, um, breasts up here can be hookshotted. <laughs> I don't know the, I do not know the reasoning behind it. <laughs> I just, I, it's, it's such a random, a random spot on the map to do this. And also we got ourselves the, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. We have a scarecrow in this room, as we told us uh, earlier. Or heard earlier. But you have to be in the right spot to do it in. Because it'd be my son to say, nope, it's not active. Uh, but of course. Also, we can tell that the boss door is at the top of the statue, though. It's like, okay. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. Too bad you can't use all the scarecrow notes in one song because that would be funny. There we go. There, there's Pierre. Hello, buddy. I'm gonna hookshot you to death. <laughs> Man, you have to hookshot me every time you summon me, you know. You have, you have, a, you have things on your side. <laughs> That's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, but this thing can be uh, hookshotted or at least longshotted. I can show it off right here. So yeah, see where the hooks are right here. You can. Oh, oh, you're gonna prove me wrong, huh? Or maybe they remove this in the game. They probably remove this in the later versions. Nope, it's still in the game. Yep, right on, right at the, right at the center. Link can hook shot it. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I guess the the developers were just using the materials needed to fill in a slot or something. And those materials, basically, at least those textures, had programmable, uh, clippable, like walk. I guess you know, hook shot a little material or target on it. I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, this also, this room here is also quite optional as well. Um, normally that it's basically in case you need to come back here, in case you need to go after you know other uh, objectives that you missed. But this will take you directly to the center of the the start of the air, start of the temple. I just, I guess, it, I just find myself not useful of it all, but if you want to, that's a way of doing it. I don't see the purpose of it, naturally. Uh, let's see what I need. Put my Orcaria on my hand. Yeah, I always find myself uh, putting the Orcaria of Time on my hand, because I always feel like I'm going to need it, regardless what happens. Because <laughs> it's an essential gimmick. At least, thankfully, in the, Orc in the uh, 3D remake... Uh, they just basically made the Orcarina its own button because of how how much how much use you have to use it in, which is nice. And that guys, you know, it means it means that you fears up a slot, which they also did for like um. Let's see, they, yeah, they made the uh, four slots, four slots for items, and they moved the iron boots and the uh, uh and the hover boots into the into an items that you can just equip on the on the fly. Which is nice and all. I'm glad they did that. Okay, they are not gonna be like that. You're not gonna like me with that, are you, cursed thing? I'm gonna hit you with a bomb. Ooh yeah. And there's probably another one here too, isn't there? Nope, just the one. Oh what? No. I'm gonna hit this thing. Go. Give me stuff. No stuff. No stuff. All right, whatever. Into the next door we go. Oh, hello! Hello, Anubis. Now there's two of you. But hey, but guess what? Your puzzle is completely in shambles when it can be burnt to crisp! <laughs> also, the fact that the beamos are actually affected by it. That's interesting. You're gonna try to burn me, are you? I'll burn you instead, Anubises. Well, so much for that puzzle. <laughs> like, okay, if you try to do this, you go... We use the Song of Time here. <laughs> what is it? What's going up here with this on Twitch chat? It is like uh, almost got defeated by an iron knuckle. <laughs> That's what. Um, so, um, so yeah, that that's the you're supposed to use this Song of Time to get this block here because when you hit that switch, it's supposed to be like in the, like right in front of the Beamos is where uh, the fire is supposed to spawn, and that's where you're supposed to kill the uh, the Anubises. But, uh, you don't need to. Just use Dense Fire. <laughs> another, another count for Dense Fire. Ching! There you go. <laughs> now we hit this switch. And again, that switch opens up the fire here. So yeah, you don't need to use that switch whatsoever. 
All right. Oh, we got this annoying room. Yeah. You want to talk about a jerkish placement? Yeah, these Armos Knights, these, uh, these guys can move. Because now you need to move them to the point they'll jump onto the switch. And after they get angry with you, you have to make a quick mad dash to open up the door. That's what you have to do. <laughs> Again, I just don't know why that's a pressure switch. Oh, and we got our next boss. It's another Iron Knuckle. But this time, I'm prepared this time. You have your big axe? I have. I have big Goron sword. Ah! <laughs> You were saying? I was saying I was prepared. Look at that. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, if you're doing like a three heart run, one hit from this guy will basically end your run. So, yeah, that's why he's uh, kind of a jerk. <laughs> that's why I come in here with a big Goron sword and just basically go to town with him. And that is our item. That means we get our second item of this dungeon. Yeah. Yeah, you need unique set piece. Uh, you get two items for your for your liking here. Not bad, I would say personally. We get ourselves the uh, the uh, aforementioned last shield of the game, the mirror shield. The mirror shield it reflects polished surfaces, reflects light of energy. Press hard to use it. Don't use it physically, or you might shatter. <laughs> I say, why why would a mirror shield actually be worth it? I guess it would only it would only be used for like ceremonial purposes. That's all. All right, now with our new uh, mirror shield equipped, we now can completely uh, complete this dungeon all the way from the all the way from the start to finish. Oh yeah, there's uh, two hidden things here, two hidden chests. Luckily, you don't have to use the eye of uh, eye of truth for it because the game actively shows it on the map for you. I think that's a design oversight, I would say, because I would think that if the chest is hidden by the lens of truth, you shouldn't be able to see the chest on the map. I just feel that that means it's kind of pointless. But now we can get rid of these guys, so we don't need to go out there anymore, so we can get rid of you guys all the way together. I don't want to deal with you guys at all. Yeah! <laughs> Let's see what how you guys like it. Getting slapped in the face. <laughs> oh, here you go. I'll open up the door for you before I die. <laughs> I do think the blue switch here has some sort of delay, I want to say, after it's hit. I would imagine so. Alright, with the mirror shield, now we have to use these light shields here and light up the suns ourselves. We are now a walking mirror. Which is nice. It's a Again, the mirror shield here I see I love the mirror shield's design here. That I do in uh, Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask's uh, shield just looks so weird to me. It just it looks like a it look again, it's like put someone putting on a mask and basically being horrified of putting a mask on themselves. And you have the fact that you can't get rid of that shield in Majora's mask. You know, after you get it equipped. Alright, that's uh curse me in my auto jumping. <laughs> uh when you equip the uh mirror shield in Majora's mask, you're seeing that to the end of the game. Yeah, that the freaky face. <laughs> and there's no way for you to change it. Let's go here. Oh, I'm just gonna throw the bomb, but that did not work out either. Chuck you. At least you're basically uh, indifferent. The indifferent Bemos. All right, so let's talk about how to bypass this puzzle. So, <laughs> the game wants you to climb this wall, right? But basically, if you climb when it's basically sliding around everything, it will it will hurt you or something like that. You know, you're supposed to be fast and quick, but the game doesn't really indicate that uh, this is a client. This is a uh, hook shotable object. So you can just go right here. With the long shot equipped. Booyah! Completely bypass that climbing puzzle. I'm not sure if the developer that was intentional, but you know what? Because, you know, in all my times of all my friends I've heard playing this game, they never once ever climb up that wall. That is a hook shotable wall and you know it. <laughs> Ow. That was supposed to be a parked car and you got hit by it, Link. It was a parked car. Oh, right. <laughs> We're not in Breath of the Wild territory. <laughs> you don't know what cars are. 
But now we have to use our Zelda's lullaby and get ourselves into our next room right here. Yeah, and the song that's used for us. Oh, we got this here. We got ourselves our. It feels like this is kind of. It kind of feels like this is a finale dungeon. It really does. Because it, it forces it forces all the items for you to be used all at once. Which is not bad, mind you. I do I do like when the like you know what items are used in other dungeons. That means it gives them the versatility that they never had before. But at the same time, however, it's uh let's see. <clears throat> it means that they had really had basically run out of uh, budget to put new enemies down. Yeah, all these doors here are fake doors, you can tell. But you need to do oh, I need to put my uh, hook shot on. Right here. Hit this eye switch right here. And that brings out a platform for you to climb up on, which is timed, mind you. It's not told. It is timed. <laughs> Go on this switch here, and you get yourselves the boss key. Yeah, this dungeon... You know what's kind of funny? This dungeon actually goes by really quick when you know what you're doing. Because it literally is just a hallway. I say Young League has got the more treasures of the two dungeons. Of the two halves of the Spirit Temple. My golly, that seems about quick. Even though basically the spirit temple was basically completed in one timeline and now we're in the opposite timeline Basically doing the same thing. So that gives me okay. Let's be frank here I'm still on the I'm still on the camp that there is two timelines when link is going between forward and backwards in time Because obviously we're changing events in alternate timelines that are causing a bit of a interesting change uh, according, to, according to what's happening uh, in between times because we all know that Gandorf is technically, you know, in... Because, what's the When Link puts the Master Sword back in the pedestal and he goes back to a child, technically, back in a child, he... Gandorf doesn't have the... the Ocarina of Time, or the, uh, the Triforce of Power. But in the adult, he does. And so, that gets me quite a questioning, you know... So, if Link just goes back in time, and just doesn't do anything, after the Master Sword's been pulled him back, you think that, you know, he just, you know, technically that's what he does after the end of the game. He just goes back, we go back in time and basically tell the King of Hyrule that, hey, you should follow what, you should follow what your daughter's telling you because it's true. The King's like, show your evidence, and he shows the Triforce of Courage in his hand. <laughs> it's like, it's like, ooh, you have the Triforce of Courage in your hand. I don't know how you got it, but I will certainly believe a time-traveling uh, hero <laughs> that I've never met before. That's kind of a baffling in its own self, but, you know. I guess the king was persuaded when two people, when two kids tell uh, the king of Hyrule tells exactly what you can do uh, with the prophecy, then the, that the king believes you. <laughs> but I'd say, like, the spirit temple's like, I'd say the spirit temple's in two different timelines. Like, I mean, there has to be. Yeah, I know, I know that the game, I know the game's officially has three timelines now, thanks to the Zelda's official timeline. Thanks to Hyrule Historia, but before even going after Ganondorf, though, himself, I still on the cusp of basically when Link goes back in time to collect items and everything, he's literally going back to a time that, that's his time. Let's be frank here. Yeah, well, we kind of think this is all one timeline in this own instance, but I don't think that is right. I think there's two timelines cohering with each other. One young, one adult. And basically, Link is basically is basically influencing both timelines thanks to him able to go through the timelines himself. Hit that right there. Oh, I'm too far away. There we go. Okay, that was questionable hit detection on, on their part, but whatever. <laughs> so activating all that, we're getting ourselves to the boss of this place. Yeah, I just kind of feel this dungeon is really small. Even though it kind of, but so still, still, still an hour long in terms of the recording time we've been on this. Is that we're here for an hour, but still. We come right here and knock this up and get ourselves over here and let's go after the boss of this dungeon. <laughs> 